things. I see, I see. But yeah. Uh, hi everybody, welcome to Curry 64. This game is pretty dang cool. It's a pretty neat video game. That's all I have to say about that. With me commenting is uh, Swords and Kirby. Hello. Hello. So yeah, without further ado, I'll, I'll count it down from three, and we'll go and go. Three, two, one, go. All right, hardest thing in the game is done. I, just, I skipped the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> many, many runs have been lost to that. I'll miss them truly. <laughs> so yeah, today we're going to run 8%. This is a very simple category in how it works. We got double fire, and we're going to keep that for a lot of the run. <laughs> Ow. It's already. But yeah, double fire is the best power in the entire game, essentially. It goes the fastest, it's just really good. <laughs> The hardest thing about using it though is, is like using it and not getting stuck and like hitting that enemy to get out of it. That's kind of the hardest thing about using it. You gotta be careful of that. Yeah, it's surprisingly precise for something that like is invulnerable for like three seconds, but then afterwards he has a very very long recovery time, so you have to be really careful about uh, where you started because I'll determine uh, where you went. Uh, some other movement options in this game, uh, like single fire, you'll be seeing that a little bit uh, later on. But in terms of moving through these like flat uh, areas where you don't have to change your height much and just ground and stuff like that, uh, double fire is the best option for real time runs. There's Waldy, by the way. It's basically Waldy gets infected by dark matter in this case. It turns the wall do. I don't think that's actually like straight up the lore. Like how it works in other games for the wall dudes, but you know, it's how it works in this game at least. Yeah, it does a neat little strat. One of the advantages of using double fire is that its hitbox is significantly bigger, especially behind it, compared to single fire. The behind it box is gigantic, actually. <laughs> I kill a lot of enemies when I'm not even close to it a lot of the time. Especially the, like, the bosses pork coming up with the, the wispies. I always kill like one of the wispy juniors like way behind it usually. Also, I love this song. It's so calming. I think a general rule for like any song that's really good in this game is if it contains bells, it's a really good song. So while the while the officer is a little ride right here on his little wooden contraption, but we're just gonna ignore him. Sorry, Waldy. Next time. Waldy is actually canonically our best friend in this game, so like, we just know your best friend, like, a little, little comfy ride. A little, a little, like, us time, you know. And I'll say it feels bad, but you know, it's okay. All for a sake of speed. So let's get into that cutscene. Adeline gets taken over by Dark Matter. So now we have to destroy all these enemies she's gonna paint up and create for us. To... Yeah, brought to Bert right here. It's good. <laughs> on the bottom. That's kind of a cool mecha that's kind of mechanic in this game as well too, it's a little bit neat. If you hit an enemy while it's, com while it's coming down on top of you, by jumping against it, you'll just do no you'll just either destroy it, or just do nothing with it. Or just kind of like stop for a second rather. Also, no one knows what's that, what that sensor enemy actually is. I assume it's a wall of do, because of the pattern, but I just don't know. So the ice dragon here... Boss between two. There are two different patterns that you do. Uh, if you stand on the right side of it, uh, you can tell which one's gonna happen. So because it didn't turn around, uh, it was gonna jump. Uh, the other one is just an ice. There's drawn Dark Mare destroyed. And there's Adeline, just kind of flips off the screen. Yeah, there's a little bit of randomness in this fight with, like, the, the, the patterns. The Another one up. Let's do it in a row. <laughs> Oh, uh, now you can make sure you don't game over. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, most of the randomness in terms of, like, time variance in that fight is basically, uh, how long Adeline takes to draw the next phase. Sometimes it's, like, a, like a second where she, like, uh, swings her paintbrush and stuff like that. But in terms of the patterns, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So jump high right here, and we just mash B to get another double fire up right there. Pretty convenient. It's always pretty straightforward for the most part, it's gonna be a lot of just 
It's a lot of using double fire. I'm like, being precise with this. Right until the very end, of course. If I correctly, I can go right into this hole right here. Oh! A little past. Whoops. <laughs> That's fine. Alien once, once again give us a 1 up, but we already got 2 so far in the run, so that's cool. Also, nice. That happened there, that's fine. It's not a huge deal. Yeah, since double fire features so heavily in the 8% category, making mistakes uh, really hurts. <laughs> yeah. Like if you have to wait for the entire animation to run out before you can do anything else. Again. Yeah, it's, it's a bit unfortunate. You have to be really precise to make everything work, to not lose a lot of time. Which can be very tricky to say at least. Especially if something goes wrong. Here's DD. Once again, get possessed, getting possessed by Dark Matter. One way you know that is you don't, you don't, you don't see in the fight here because I like, kill him so quickly. But essentially, he like opens up his stomach and it's like has like teeth there and starts shooting stuff at you. That's how I know he's possessed. DD can't do that. Usually stuff goes in his stomach, not comes out of it. Yeah, pretty much so far this is sort of a, a throwback to Dreamland 3, especially with the uh, Adam and DD fight. It's, it's pretty much similar to how those boss fights work. Like, they're basically like, easier versions of those boss fights as they appear to be. That was a good start there. Those Wishes Juniors are random what they do, essentially. And so is Wispy, who just gave me apples right now. That's a time loss. But it's okay. Now, for Wispy, we can get two cycle in by hitting one of the roots, then turn around and hitting the other one. And, like, during the, of the, during the whole double fire animation, I can destroy two roots at once, if done correctly. Same time around. So, we can do it again right here. Wispy, and got Wispy will alternate between apples and roots. Uh, which, whichever one he does first uh, is random. And also, for. In between those hacks, uh, which you can also puff, wasting time as well. The puff doesn't waste a whole lot of time, but it still matters. It's about a second or so. Oh, full pass where it could be. Should be fine though. Ow. Never mind. <laughs> the double fire route is especially important in this uh, room because a lot of the enemies will come towards you. So for example, if some enemy is a cacti. The orange birds that appear out of the ground, all of them will come towards you, so exactly where you are. It's especially important in what otherwise seems like a really sparse room. If I'm mistaken as well, uh, jumping with double fire goes a little farther than just like not jumping with it, like on the ground. Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't really know all the details, but it, it depends on stuff like whether or not, like where you are in your jump. Uh, whether or not you had horizontal speed before you started, so on and so forth. Yeah, it's like that's also that's also very uh, of note as well to you. It is. It's just like these small details that can really uh, like determine whether you hit your mark or not. Yeah, and the run that's all about position, like uh, precision, like this run here, that's very important. Your, your precision, like where you double, like where you go for double fire, your position, where you stop is the most important thing in the run, honestly. And also good, good signal fires. We'll get there soon. <laughs> this run isn't entirely double fire as some people think. <laughs> yeah. We gotta kill stuff after all. We won't kill everyone with double fire. By the way, uh, if you mind pointing out the other day that these uh, things in the background, we're gonna call them Sandrosses from now on. You look like Andros from uh, Star Fox Ness. <laughs> so I'm gonna call it Sandros. Nice. But yeah. Boss room is pretty straightforward. All we do here is just mash B and should be good. Yeah, so the difference between 80% and 100% is that in 80% you don't need to collect any of the crystal shards. Uh, those will sometimes require specific abilities to get. Uh, because we don't need to you know, keep switching ability combinations, uh, we can keep double fire for extended periods of time in such a way that uh, it does save time over just selecting single fire. You can get shards though if we're like in the way and like it's faster to get them. It doesn't really matter too much because you'll need all of them or anything. I right, can get can get two fire emojis in chat by the way for double fire. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Because next time we have to do longboard platforming. We can't double fire until the very end of it. Let's get Yagi around a lot of these enemies right here. Reason being, just just a lot of vertical movements, more anything else. Get through everything. Yeah, I should mention a little bit about loading zones in this game. In most Kirby games, you have doors, in which case uh, like you have to enter the door. But in this one, uh, because they're loading zones at like the size of space and stuff like that, uh, you can slide into them, and that saves just a little bit of time. Uh, another important part about it is that um, if you're holding something in your mouth, uh, you, can, you can go through a loading zone. And in most Kirby games, you cannot go through doors with uh, something in your mouth. Yeah, usually, just spit it out. Not this one, though. That's not, there's one coming to play in the 8% round, but 100% is especially important for that. Yeah, this game is really chill. I, I, I think it's a lot of reason why I like it a lot of the speed points. It's because it's, it's pretty chill and. Very easy to, to learn and run, but it's hard to master, like any sort of run, of course. Here's the first DD section. DD can break walls with his hammer. Those brown walls in this case. That's really his main big thing. He also climb like this. Besides climb right here, I can also like, make him jump up a ledge, like this, to, to avoid having to climb once more. Same just a little bit of time. And yeah, nice. It's definitely faster to, uh jump up these chains and ropes and stuff like that, as opposed to just climbing. It's also faster to make Kirby cry, unfortunately, at the end of each level. <laughs> Which sucks. You just gotta mash A at the end of the level. Sometimes when you mash A, you, get cert you also get certain items. Doesn't happen all the time, just depends if it's close to your knots, but... But yeah. So we're gonna here we're gonna finally get rid of double fire. And, get and go for a single fire instead. Wanna explain why guy? Yeah, so... With double fire, uh, what you have is um, it's like long extended attack. Sometimes the spacing of rooms, like the way that they're laid out, uh, you have room to do, let's say, a couple single fires, but you do not have room to do double. Fire. So, for example, in this uh, room where Shasta just dropped down, um, you definitely do not have enough room to do a double fire, but you can squeeze in time with single fire. Oh my god. Yeah, the thing we can do is uh, chain, chain single fire like this. That's what we're gonna do with every single fire, essentially, just chain together. It's a bit, it's a bit tricky to do so. Yeah, so the way that works is that um, normally after you do a single fire, you just fall down, but you can cancel the falling animation by floating up. And you can well, exit floating by immediately puffing and then starting another fire. So you can chain together these across like an entire room. And if done perfectly, you'll drop this like really, really minuscule amount of height. Uh, it's like pretty much not noticeable, so it just looks like you're going preserving height perfectly across the screen. Alright, for those in the chat, I had to drop a little bit of frames, but it should be good now. I was having a little trouble before I started streaming earlier. I don't know why. Blame Spectrum. <laughs> funnel, funnel thing, by the way, on, on this last room, you saw in the, in the previous room, I just went down the center and nothing hit me. You can do the same thing for the last room, but if you go on the right, it, nothing will hit you. If you're, in my, if you're in my chat, once he runs with time, point it out, he's like, why aren't you going on the right? You won't get hit that way. That tried, that just tried it later, and it's like, yeah, I didn't get hit that way. <laughs> you're right. Also, I forgot to get health there, so I'm gonna have to knock up the auto scroll skip. That was my fault. Okay, though. So, is, is the next room gonna give you an auto scroll skip? It's gonna be a platform that rises the whole time until the very top of the room. Unfortunately, I did not get health. I need two health. For, I need at least three health for that. And that's my own fault there, so we can show it off. But it's okay. Yeah, in most Kirby games you can just float up indefinitely. In this one, Kirby does have a limited amount of air, and one way to refresh that amount of air is to just simply take damage. I can do the last one though. I think I'm gonna try. I'm, I'll go for that. I'll just have one health. We're going risky strats. <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. Yeah, there are a couple puzzles in this game designed around the fact that uh, Kirby can't float indefinitely. Alright, so takes damage and then floats up. This one's tricky as well. You can do a pretty precise jump to skip these uh, platforms here. It takes about 10 seconds if I get this. Let's see if I can do it. And got it. Nice. I also get free health in that room, which is pretty good too. That's not too important because you get another health. You get a, a master mayo over here in a second. 
if you want to be super fast, you can skip this. You know, it's like less than a second to get it. <laughs> but it's, it's worth it. Yeah, this room is supposed to be like going around all these moving platforms, but if you know about the location of the Max you can just skip straight to the end. This room gonna get a double star. Doesn't matter what it is, we just need a double star for the boss. In this case, it's easier to just get like, double, double electricity. These pulls are a bit tricky to climb up as well too. They mentioned it earlier, but it's, if if I don't, if I press like right all the way there, I'll just go to the other side of it. So in order to keep grabbing like that, you need to press like barely to the right, it's like a tilt for instance in Smash, just barely to the right. Now everybody in chat, do the face that Kirby's doing. I got you. There we go. This this is a uh, pix. Pix is first minute go. or so is. The only thing you have to do is avoid taking damage the whole time. Uh, there are two days, like there are basically two patterns for this. One where uh, they start by spinning clockwise, and one where you start by spinning counterclockwise. And all you have to do is just stand in one spot to avoid them the entire way up. Okay. That's what I'm doing right here. So the reason why Shasta mentioned that he uh, wants to get some kind of double ability uh, when you throw your double ability, like, star at an enemy, it'll do two damage, and also not break upon contact. And so what he wants to do for certain patterns is to throw the double star into two of them, doing, uh, four damage each, I guess? I think so, yeah. Yeah, four, da four damage each. And they they each take, uh, six damage. Very, very far. Oh! Two damage. Two damage. Bad luck. They all have four so for this pattern, uh, they don't really like they're sort of the Oh they my god! I messed up. Yeah, that was really bad. <laughs> I, I was supposed to get him. I was him at least twice there. I messed up though. It's it's really hard to get that. It's, it's just it's just challenging. That's all it is really. So in the pattern where they spread out, you're supposed to use double start to get two of them at once. Not gonna get this yeah, either. Yeah, let's just gonna do that. For hey, this wait. part, there are these. Uh, oh my god, god. <laughs> nice. I just trained with the blue. <laughs> nice. Sorry, Gripper. So, if the colors are matching, it'll do two damage, otherwise, it'll do one damage. But since Shasta already did a little bit of damage on the first phase, he's able to do a, like a mismatch hit uh, on the red guy at the end. Yeah, yeah like. It's a tricky, tricky boss. There are a lot of different things that can happen in that fight. It's very random at the ends. There's, there's ways to get around the randomness, but it's, it's still really hard. Especially in the pattern I got. That's definitely the hardest to like adapt to. Now we're in 3 1 though. World 3 is a lot happier. Very cheerful, very fun. It's nice. Yeah, so even though there are two enemies, Shasta is going to go with a single fire. Um, people often ask, like, why do you do single fire in some places and double fire in other places? For World 3, the answer is uh, quite complicated, I guess. Uh, there's, like, some places where single fire is faster, some places where double fire is faster. And it turns out that single fire comes out to, like, less than a second faster, and it's way easier. It's definitely way easier, for sure. Because, like, for instance, in this room, you just kind of spam it for a lot of it. Except for his Kabu come up over here, he's going to throw a thing at me. Yeah, so unlike single fire, you don't need to route it. In a lot of places, you don't need to route it as carefully as you do with double fire, because since the attack is so short, you can uh, adjust. And also, you can also control the length of the uh, length of the fire. I guess just like to spin around. Don't worry about him. <laughs> A lot of times it's gonna be just one big long chain if done correctly. Usually I mess with that though. You, you, you get you lose just a little bit of height every single time you you sing every single time you use single fire and chain like this. It's a very small bit of height. I'll be safe here. So you gotta be aware of that and never use it. If done correctly, you can lose like no height, I think, potentially. It's like really, really small, you won't even notice it. Yeah. It's like sub-pixel kind of thing. <laughs> it's very minuscule, but it's really hard to do that, of course. As me, 
I mean, not the best runner in this game, of course. <laughs> it's it's uh, hard to do that. Another thing that's tricky about single fire is that um, the lengths of the fire get shorter the longer you do it. So the first one lasts like maybe close to a second, and then it decreases down to about half a second. I think it's also faster to run on the wire there instead of using just fire there at all. I don't know if that's correct, but it's at least what I do there. Yeah, I think that's that's right. All right, cool. Just making sure on that one. I, I I never used fire there, so I was just making sure. So with the water and other uh, similar effects, if you're running with the direction that's flowing, it'll uh, you'll move at like 25% faster than Kirby's normal running speed. Otherwise, you'll uh, get hit with a 25% penalty. Time for a nice wholesome ride down the down the river with your best friend in a little box. This part's. Kind of an auto scroller, kind of, kind of not. The reason why is because you can actually speed up just a little bit by jumping like this. It doesn't speed up too much, but still, it makes a little bit of difference. Yeah. So the, the 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 way that that works is that uh, in different parts of the river, you're actually not moving at the at like a constant speed throughout. Some parts of the river are going to be faster, and the way that you preserve that speed, if you're going from a like a fast section into a slow section, you want to jump to preserve your speed from the fast section. So what would be a fast session in this case? Like a downhill session? Um, I actually don't know. Like, <laughs> when, when I was running this game, yeah, so you, you pretty much got the fast section at the very, very end. Like, there's like one big jump before the screen transition, and before that is a fast second, and after that is a slow second. Okay, okay. Interesting then. So, so Shaft is keeping the uh, fire ability in his mouth. Uh, if you fall from too high of a height, uh, you'll face plant. But if you've got something in your mouth, you're not going to face plant. In this game, you, you lose a lot, a lot of speed if you uh, face plant. In some games, like, you still preserve speed pretty much perfectly, but in this one, uh, you do take a big penalty. This room is also pretty tricky. So you have you have a power that goes really fast horizontally, but you have to go vert, very fast ho vertically here mostly. So because of that, it's after routes like single fire, so I don't to get around all these enemies here and still be able to, like use it in some way to go faster. It's pretty tricky to do so, and very easily a fail to say the least. But that was a really solid room there. So nice. There we go. It's a rainbow in my splits as well. Nice. Nice. That's a good level. <laughs> By two seconds? Good stuff. <laughs> Alright, so 3-3 three three has a lot of a lot of single fire training in it. Like for a long time. It's very easy to drop it if you're not careful, which I'm not most of the time. <laughs> but yeah. That's gonna be what a lot of this is. And hopefully it can do pretty well. Alright. There we go. This room especially is really long. Yeah, not really much to say about this besides just... It's constant single fire until uh, like two rooms after this, basically. <laughs> yeah, single fire is quite a. Um, it's it's like fairly precise, and you have to do this constantly oh. throughout this run. Oh no, <laughs> that's weird. Darn Gordos. <laughs> It's very important though. If you don't have to do a single fire, you can lose a lot of time essentially. Especially if you drop it like randomly. Which can be pretty easy to do a lot of time, if you're not careful. It takes some practice to like not to like not be able to drop it that much at least, or that often. If I'm correct, like, I could have uh, raised the very top of that cat bar's head with single fire, but I was just a bit too high on that. Give me some more damage, will put me will put me in the right position there. 
This log this yeah. logger was also very tricky. <laughs> this logger may have a lot of bad memories. <laughs> uh, let's just say the the first, third, and fifth platform drop instantly, and because of that, it's really hard to jump off of them. Because you only have a few frames to do so. I got it there though, thankfully, but it can be very, very tricky. And as long as they they won't hesitate. They're really <laughs> they'll hurt you immediately. They'll squish you for like a while. So it can be hard to just get around them. Nice. So this first room, I'm gonna go to the right over here, and hopefully none of the torpedoes will hit me at all. And they did not. Nice. I think it shot out randomly, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And it's giving me a power in that case on top of the on top of the doorway. And find out this room right here is actually faster by uh, holding this little fish above your head. This legitim this legitimately saved like 10 seconds throughout the entire of this room. Because Kirby doesn't swim that fast. Yeah, there are certain enemies, a lot of them, like, enemies that don't give you abilities that uh, do funny things if you hold them above your head. This is one of them. For example, you can hold a bunch of, uh, like, a bird and then sort of glide with it, etc, etc. There we go. This goes way faster than using uh, fire in this room. So like not only for movement, but there are enemies that will constantly attack uh, while they're above your head as well. Yep, like I saw at the very end there, there's one enemy that almost got me, because he like stuck his all spikes up and everything. I get I go at just the right height, so I don't have to worry about that essentially. It can be a bit hard like to tell what, what height you're at though, but it's not too bad. This room I'm gonna get a bomb, I'm not gonna actually absorb it until the very end. Just save a little bit just save a little bit of time. Right here. If done correctly, I can get one cycle on this boss. I want to right now. I've actually failed this a lot recently, which I practiced a lot before, so it sucks that I failed recently, but it's okay. Hopefully I can get this, though. Yeah, this quick kill saves about that six seconds or so. Yeah, some of that. So I can do it. Oh, that was the worst version on that. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I just zoomed around past him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the well. idea is to get stuck in that alcove and then uh, like repeatedly throw bombs, but the water is constantly pushing you, but at the same time, if you're too close to the ceiling, your bomb is just going to explode into the ceiling. So there's a little bit of like juggling that goes on there, I guess. Yeah, usually the bomb explodes in the ceiling for me, unfortunately. <laughs> that's, the thing, that's a common occurrence for me. It'd be just at the right distance so it doesn't like, explode there, so I can destroy him. So in this room, none of the rocks will actually uh, spawn like near the ceiling, but there are those parts where you have to swim down a little bit. And luckily, Shasta didn't get caught by any of those rocks. Yeah, thankfully. Those rocks can be a bit weird. Can't, I think they're random where they, go, where they like go in general. Yeah. There we go. So, where Echo drifts in that, in that beginning of this fight is completely random. He'll drift up or down. You can stay, you can stay towards the top or stay towards the bottom the whole time if he wants to. It's a small bit of luck, but it's not too, too bad, by all means. So, Shasta got good luck there. Uh, the last hit killed Akro when he was closer to the ground. And the second phase, like this whole sequence where uh, the camera starts scrolling, is triggered when the moment Akro like, hits the ground. There's just a little bit of variance there. And the effectiveness of bomb is really shows in the second phase, where you can actually drop a bomb on aggro off screen. There we go. Pretty good fight. Yeah. Missed miss one hit in, during the second phase, I think. Take a little bit to get it again. But other than that, really good. That's that's a luck you want there. You can do two patterns. One where it goes into the background and turns back up, and one where you, and that pattern there, which, which is the one you want, because it saves time. Yeah, another nice aspect about Bomb is it's lingering hitbox, so you can sort of like buffer it a little bit, uh, like between hits. Ow. Yeah, this first room of 4-1, uh, even though like Kirby doesn't have ability, uh, it's one of the trickiest rooms in the entire game just because there are a lot of enemies oh. and a lot of small like, movement strands. Like for instance, I jump right here just so I cap our melee throws. Instead of jumping up to meet me with that throw, that sort of thing. Yeah. The way that cap bars attack is that uh, once you get 
close enough to him, uh, Catbar will throw his chakra thing at the height at which you like got close to him. So you can manipulate the attack a little bit that way. Better get single fire. The useful is next room. Which is next room is really hard, so I'm gonna concentrate on that really really quickly. But I'll explain really quick. Yeah, so basically these vines are on a cycle and there's a specific one that Chas is trying to get. Uh, quite tricky because you do need to float underneath these, especially after this platform right here. You have to go oh. very close to the bottom of the screen. Barely. I wasn't confident enough to do one more single fire there. Oh, yeah. I thought I was going to fall too low. And one thing you can do with these uh, vines is that you can preserve the momentum from it, so this last fire is like really fast into, into the door. <laughs> you just go all across it. Just go wee! All the way past it. Right to the door. It's nice. Yeah, same thing's oh. going to happen in this room here. Um, there are going to be these Oh! Well then. <laughs> well. <laughs> that bat barely got me. <laughs> That's unfortunate. And I made me lose my fire, which is why, which is what happened there. If you get hit twice in this game, you, lo you lose your fire in this case. Or lose whatever power you have, really. I'm gonna actually do like this. I'm gonna stay on this log and just do this casually. So, good news is I get fired at the very end of this room. So, like, it's not a huge deal. But yeah. It still, it still sucks to happen, though. Rather, not the end of this room, at the uh, end of this next room here. Thankfully, again, invincibility can't use, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, for whatever reason, the invincibility candy in music is different in this game compared to, like, any other Kirby game. Oh, I destroyed him instead, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd get him I was, if I did absorb him like that, but apparently I was wrong. Yeah, but either way, um, what you're going to want to do here is get double fire. Yep. Whether it's with the fire that you had before, or uh, respawning uh, the same enemy. In that case, I had to respawn the same enemy. <laughs> but it's okay. Hurry, a free green star for my troubles. That's like, I think worth two stars. <laughs> I don't know. That was kind of an ugly death, though, unfortunately. But it just happens sometimes. Like we mentioned earlier, just... A lot, a lot of the toughness about this run is actually in positioning of, of your single and double fires. In that case, I positioned it just a little bit off where it should have been. So that happened as a result. That's alright. So here we have another auto scroller. It's like the river one. Um, but for whatever reason, it's different in that there's like no fast or slow seconds. But you do want to be jumping constantly for whatever reason. <laughs> it's a little bit faster. Like, I don't know, the way that, like, I imagine this is that because there are, like, multiple levels to these, uh, uh, say, like, minecart tracks, like, they had to, like, code it up differently. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's my justification in my head. <laughs> Maybe. I really just have no idea. And bonk. So, if, if good thing Double fire is right here. I can go past a lot of these uh, falling enemies here. I'm gonna call them swamps, even though they're not swamps, but they're basically the same. Oh, I got Kermit the Frog. Oh no. <laughs> That's okay. There we go. You wanna get past them every time, because whenever you go into them, they'll just like bounce you right off every time. You gotta be aware of that. So, the reason why we switch to double fire is that once again, 4 2 and uh, is a fairly horizontal level with not too many like, walls in the way. But another thing that uh, does save time is that whenever you need to sort of go in a down, downwards direction in addition to going to the right, uh, like you sort of get it for free by doing like the double fires recovery as opposed to single fire where you have to drop down here. You know? few more in this room right here. Hopefully I'll land to a puddle. Oh no. Uh, oh no. I said hopefully. Oh heck. I, that was misinput at the end there. That was a complete misinput. Okay, that's bad because I don't, I, don't get, I don't get fire until the very end of the next, of uh, until the very first room before three at this point. That's my next point I can get fire at. That was a really ugly death again. So in that case, I'm, we're going to go casual strats and use fire for, for uh, <laughs> for his next part here after this. 
Unfortunately, I can't show up the cool, uh, very risky but very fast uh, strat in the room after this one too, or after the room after this. But it's okay. We're just gonna jump over the pels as it goes. That's a really that's a really bad death there actually. Oh well. Good old marathon. Yeah, that's that's some marathon stuff there. This wasn't happening in uh, my runs earlier this week or yesterday. But it's okay. That E just trapped in his room. Just use Kai here. That's that's a good backup strat. So this mini boss has like I guess 24 parts, four waves of six. So I I, th I think they're like grouped up into groups of four, such that um, if you don't kill one in one of the waves, uh, you have to you have to kill it to get the the, the next enemy in line. So it's kind of like the way that arena fights work in like Nightmare and Mainland slash Kirby's Adventure. Kind of. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Except it's all their spawn positions are random. That's really unfortunate that happened. <laughs> yeah, so, so with uh, double fire or like some kind of fire, uh, you can skip one of those cycles on those uh, moving pillars. So do I, I do want double yeah. fire here as well. So I'm gonna get that up here. Instead of just single fire. You know there's only one fire in me I can get, like in this, in this room. It's just best I get double fire, because it's better just for one I just one I know it better with double fire, two, it's just I think it's faster in this case. It's one of the hardest levels in the run. Because it's this level has more precision than the other ones, I'd say. Like where you double fire matters a lot. For instance, I went back there a little bit so I can be right where I'd usually be with double fire. That sort of thing. Yeah, there are a lot of small platforms above, like, big pits. Ow. So, in this level in particular, it really, really matters uh, where you position your double fires. I have a lot of visual cues for, like, when I know when to use double fire for this room in particular. Same with the, the last room of this level as well. It's, it's really tricky, to say at least, all of this is. It's a lot harder than it looks a lot of time, really. Should be fine on the red. Yep. Okay. Nice. Yeah, Kirby is uh, Kirby 64 is often described as like a 2.5D game. Uh, even though these rooms are pretty linear, they do bend around a little bit. And for example, on that enemy that Shasta is respawning to get double fire, uh, the camera angle does screw it up because the, the room is turning. So you need to go further back than you normally would. Yeah, one note about like which is faster, single fire, double fire. I flipped just a little bit right there, so I can get right past the enemy, thankfully. I'm going to get a little, a little bit of health right there, which I need right now. So I'll slap the little ledge to save a tiny bit of time. Gets me right where I need to be as well. Go right here. Should be on, should be on top of the B. Hey, a B emoji in chat. <laughs> there we go. Good level. I'm going to get health just as I can. You know I really need it because I'm at 5 health. I'm, I'm going to be extra careful. 4-4 four, four is a... 4-4 four, four. Four, four is a <laughs> Yeah, I especially messed up this next room after this one here, some that, like a lot of the time. It can be very scary, you can lose a lot of health in this. So you know what? Better safe than sorry, especially since I already died twice in this run. <laughs> so yeah. So about single fire versus double fire. If you're like playing completely perfectly, uh, single fire overall is faster than double fire. It's just that, you know, single fire, it's three inputs per yep. fire. So to do that perfectly uh, at a rate of like something like three inputs per second or more uh, is not really feasible in build time. That's why we get double fire for a lot of parts, even though theoretically it is slower. But it's only only like a tiny bit slower theoretically. So for real time, it's like significantly faster. Um, back in the day, we used to use single fire for the entirety of World War. Uh, but it turns out, or at least like 
when I timed it out, it was like 20 seconds faster to use double fire for 2 through 4 points. And be careful there. Oh no. Not being careful, never mind, that's wrong. Yeah, this DD section is quite tricky, even though it looks like, yeah, there's like a lot of health lying around. Uh, it's really easy to take a lot of damage. Oh yeah. These enemies fly are basically just in weird spots a lot of the time. Especially for like how fast you're going through it. And that last part there especially, it's hard to like, it's hard to take out both of them without getting hurt by the first one. It's just one hammer swing. It's kind of precise. It's a lot harder than it looks in that, in that case. <clears throat> Free sandwich. What kind of sandwich is that anyways that he eats? That's kind of like a chicken salad sandwich if anything. I don't know. Ow. This needs to stop. You get hurt here again, actually. Yep. I got I got the free cave meat though, so it's okay. And I think I'm good on the mission. Yep. We find here. One more right here. So we right on this platform it looks like. Never mind, I went too far. <laughs> That's okay. I jump. I actually ran a little bit before I started doing that, which once again that messes up like how far double fire goes. I'm supposed to just regularly jump there. So that's a really, really long room, and it's really easy to like fall in lava and stuff like that. So when I was getting buried this game, I had a lot of deaths in that room. I've gotten buried it now, so like I'm, it's not as much, but it can still happen. It's very scary if it does. Super. It loses super. a lot of time if you, if you die there. Like a lot, a lot. Oh, got stuck there for a second, so we get hurt by his fire in me. Nice. Yeah, I'm not sure why, like, sometimes you get stuck there. I'm sure, like, like because you get stopped by a block, but I don't know. Yeah, it's like, weird. Box come out, I don't, I, I don't like, fully understand. You really shouldn't get stuck, but it just kind of happens. Yeah. So I wanted to go, but it's fine. Go right at well, this guy over here, so we're on top of this platform. And if, with with a double power like this, I can actually get rid of multiple blocks at once by getting rid of it. Which is also why a double fire is good for this level, in particular. Just by the very last part. I should have gotten to Mayo there, but you know what? It's okay. I'll live. I just won't take damage with Magman, it's simple. Yeah, just don't take damage for the rest of the run. Yeah, easy, forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Magman, another bond two phases. In this first phase, you're looking for to attack Magman's arms. No, I thought I'd go that direction. And I'm getting bad luck again. So, that phase I got for the first time around is a 3 hit phase. I get potentially 3 hits on it. The phase I just got is a 2 hit phase. There we go. Okay. And the phase we did not see is a 4 hit phase, which is the best luck. So I didn't get the best luck there, unfortunately. But that's okay. Essentially, the, la the phase that I did not get, he sends out four pillars, like, one at a time. So I can get all four of them if done correctly. The second phase, he has a, a, bit, luck a bit of luck to do as well. I'm just gonna keep my sword here out behind me. It'll do damage that way. What I don't want is the phase this thing just gave me, which is him going to the other side of the room. God dang it, I'm getting some bad luck as long as death in this run. That's fine, though. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, you're, that just wastes a lot of time. And for the last part, we're just gonna throw my power right into his mouth, which does two damage to him. And I don't need, I don't need uh, my, my sword anymore, so it's it's totally okay. My PB had awful luck, but I, just, I lost more time with PB there because of that. <laughs> yeah, that that was not good luck on that fight. Yeah, that's okay though. So now we're in, now we're in world five. So I'm hoping more anything else. Since I've already had my deaths out of the way, hopefully there's no deaths in world five. Dying in world 5 this run is really, really bad. If you lose double fire whatsoever in world 5, you won't get it back until the very end. Or until 5-4. Until, until the very last level. So you don't want you don't want to die in this world. That's something you don't want to do. Because <clears throat> after this so, room, there's no more. Like 4-4, four, 5-1, four, and also 5-2 have extremely long rooms. I can avoid a few jumps here if I do it correctly. Just a little bit of time. 
on these layers. And this last part right here, or this next part right here, we have a well, another little uh, wall D section. He's already on. It's not a rampage array of his sleds, so we're just kind of take a little ride with him. He's can't really control himself. Oh! Jump too, jump too late there, I mean. I don't know, he seems to control it just fine the moment Kirby gets onto the sled. You're right. So it's all deliberate. It's conspiracy. Yeah. It's conspiracy. There's also only three health on, the, on this section of notes. Which can be tricky if you really don't have a whole lot of health. That's got all of them there, thankfully, just for safety. So you can kind of say it's like a horror sled, like a horror sled quality section, but these sections aren't too hard anyways, so it's okay. I, I love wiggly arms as well. They're good. Oh, a little bit too early, and messing up the fight. Let's go. That's okay. I won't get hurt in the last part because of that. But run a little bit forward, puff up just a little bit like that, double fire across the room. There are four, there are four pillars, or little set, pillars that are dead, a dead core right there, with a one little snowman on top of it every single time. My goal is to get right past every single one of them. Then for his last parts, I slide for this and let's go to the bomb. Gonna be right past the one neighbor up here as well. This room is very tricky. This last one. There's a lot of very precise double fires you have to do here. I do get on top of these platforms every single time we do one. Yeah, this part is quite annoying. <laughs> oh yeah. I think it's like your biggest mistake in your old record, if I remember correctly. It's like you messed uh, up in this room. Oh, did, did I? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> you had like a pretty bad mess up and you messed up the rest of the room, if I remember Something like that. It's a hard room though, to be fair. Yeah. For me, I always remember uh, in 5 3. Like, I guess you'll see it later. There's the room with the, what you call the thwomps. Yeah, the thwomps. <laughs> I, I feel like, like, I remember like making that mistake. Like That, that, that felt like the biggest mistake to me, but <laughs> I, don't know, I, I guess I'll have to check my video. I haven't, I haven't watched it in a long time. <laughs> For sure. I'll sample. This room has some great music, but or this 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 level has some really great music. <clears throat> it's just better. It's a better. Maybe it's a better building from like Cruise Adventure slash Nightmare in Dreamlands. But it, it just sounds. That's why I can describe it as bouncy. It's very, it's just very nice. I don't know. Nice. That's nice. why I can describe it. Nice. But yeah. There's a lot of precision in these rooms as well. They're very long, so you gotta be. Once again, you have to be very careful of where you double fire and how you do it as well. Except for this part, there's no double fire here. <laughs> My PB has like 22 seconds to save here. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. Like, it's I know it's a hard it's a hard room and all that, but it's a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Just want to note that really quick. With with the Z bonds, you cannot the green ball thing that where you choose direction, you cannot shoot it immediately upwards, so you have to wait for it to come all the way around. Another thing to note, by the way, is at the very end of this room, there's actually an RNG boss. Or, not in this room, in this level, there's, there's an RNG boss. You gotta be aware of where he spawns in, where he's gonna go. That's also, like, a bit of a problem we want to grind in this game, it's, it's, just, it's just that boss there. Yeah, it's probably my least favorite Thing that's present in 80% that's not present in 100%. Um, in 100% you you use a different ability that is much more consistent at doing damage. Uh, but in this one, the only thing you have to use is double fire. So if he's not in a nice position for you to use double fire, then too bad. <laughs> yep. And just barely got out of the way there. And not gonna hurt my hero either. Oh no. I'm gonna do this. I am disappeared. Dang! Oh, God, barely. Yeah, see, like right there, for instance. Yeah, there's a lot of improv in that fight, just because, just because of where he's gonna spawn, where he's gonna go, and everything. You have to be, be aware then. Just adjust accordingly. It's very tricky to say the least. Uh, so one thing about this is that um, 
Like because Kirby 64 has these loading zones as opposed to doors, you can get like damage boosted into a loading zone. So I, I think this has happened to like a lot of people where you lose your ability but then you get damage boosted into a loading zone. Yep. <laughs> it's happened to me before. <laughs> it's definitely happened to me on that fight before. It's really annoying to say at least. Because now you can't go fast and it just makes you sad. But it's okay. So this is like some shopping mall level and you're taking these elevators. That's why I figure casually, honestly, just because of the theme of the level. Um, Kirby will stand sort of in the middle of the elevator, so what you want to do is you want to jump into it and turn around. So that uh, Kirby doesn't need to do any of these things on his own, when, like when you lose control upon entering the elevator. That room's a bit tricky as well. Just because you have to do a double fire over all those swamps, or the swamp things are there. There's also a glory in that room that can destroy it. I can, I can like, as, room the uh, double fire. Close to the ceiling as possible for that double fire, which can be a little bit more. If done correctly, you, you uh, don't do what I did in that boss there. <laughs> oh no. Oh, he just got out of the way of it. I was hoping to get that. Oh well. Go in this side of the room now. Heck. If done correctly, you don't fight that boss that way. <laughs> Essentially what you do is, you're supposed to do one double fire into, into the side of him. And that allows us to basically keep him in place for a bit, just to keep chaining it over and over. Yeah. You can move one a bit tiny between mistake. Each... Yeah, one tiny mistake on that fight will uh, cause you to lose like the entire cycle spent with takes just like forever. Yeah, it's really not good. And that unfortunately happened there. I was off on just my very first hit and I messed up the entire fight afterwards. Because another thing is where, where he goes afterwards is also random. We go down either the left side or the right side, and where he goes is you can't determine where he goes, essentially. In that case, I was hoping to go to the left, because I was already on the left side, and I can just do a double fire there to kill him. But it's okay. So last frame, these, these cans are... They basically have eight bots, is what they have. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, like, like where, <laughs> where... Where the can shoots is, uh... They'll, they'll shoot, essentially, where you're gonna stop every single time. So you have to be aware of like where you're gonna stop because you can get hurt if you're not careful. In that case, thankfully, I did not get hurt there. But yeah. Hey, cake. All right, here's one of the hard levels in the entire the entire run as well. This is factory. One more, one of the cooler levels in the game, I'd say as well too. Just in general. Right at the beginning is a little bit of a cutscene skip by throwing your ability as you jump down uh, to shoot. Normally, uh, if you don't do something like that, Kirby will really slowly climb down the ladder. So that saves about, uh, I want to say, like two seconds or so. Oh, how'd that get me? He was like way below me. Oh well. Yeah, that camera angle is really misleading. Definitely. This C section is probably the hardest of the entire run. You have to make a lot of cycles here, and if, you, if you're not careful, you can get one hit killed. Which I can't do that because I have. I have fire right here. I need that for later on in this area, essentially. Get away right here. So with these uh, these hammer guys, I don't, I don't think they have a name, but uh, optimally you can skip up to as opposed to waiting every single time you see Ooh, one, barely got the way. Skip up to four of these cycles, but three is uh, pretty standard. Yeah, three is what you want to go for, because the very last one you can just barely skip. It can be it's, so tricky, to say the least. And it sucks because there are a lot of enemies that you need, to, like you pretty much need to jump over them in order to avoid like losing out on skipping a cycle. But at the same time, there's this conveyor belt that's pushing you backwards the entire time. Oh, almost got that. That part's a bit tricky. To get past that one jumping at me. Speaking of tricky things, I'm gonna go right here and pull off sword at the right time. Hopefully I get this. Like... This? There we go. Okay. So, I got basically the one cycle on the boss right here. If, if I don't do that correctly, it'll fly to the very right left of the screen, and... I can't hurt him until he goes back, essentially. So, that was really nice. It's really precise to do that in the first place. 
Thinking precision. This is also another section that can also want to kill me. If I'm not careful. Right here, for instance. You just barely squeeze in that little hole there. I think there are like three different things in this stage that can one hit kill you. <laughs> it's right near the run, too, so like. Yeah. It's even more scary because of that. Yeah, so the platform that Shasta just got past. Uh, Skips, like, well, it's basically the only cycle you can skip by using fire and saves about eight seconds. There you go, good room. These the room used to trip me up a lot, but I've gotten a lot better, thankfully. Right here, I'm going to get uh, fire and cutter so I can get the fire sword back. Fire Sword is really, really good, and it's also perfect for HR. I think modern strats like Fraberson use a. Uh, I think it uses uh, Spark, if I remember correctly. Just imagine you get yeah, from this yeah. enemy right here. For, for both categories now, uh, standard use Spark, but for a long time, Fire Sword was uh, thought to be the best way of doing this fight. Also, Rainbow Mess Blitz. Yo, nice. Nice. I still need to figure out what Spark strats are for this, but. Here's at least the Fire Sword strats for now. And I got Here good luck first time. The nice. The worst boss in this game, because it's not difficult and just totally random. Yep. I got a good start though. He gave me gave me the forehead pattern. Gave me the claps. And here's <laughs> the clap. one slap. There you go. Hopefully gives me another slap right here. Or soon at least. That'd be perfect. If he doesn't, still do the full clap, which I don't want. There we go. That was pretty good luck. I'll take that. It's not the best luck I can get, obviously. I think the best luck is like... You don't do the same attack twice in a row, so like, I think the best luck is... The forward slap, and then like... I think probably the laser. And then and then slap again. But yeah. yeah. Did uh, not get that, unfortunately. One thing that can happen that's like really rare is also... Uh, slap, clap, and slap. I think it's only happened to you guys once. Oh, wow. But yeah, I never got that. That can also happen. So let's save some time there for my PV. Nice. Yeah. I'm at yes. one health. That's a bit concerning, but thankfully in 6-1 I get a tomato in this first room. Let's see you not die here. HR happens about like, I guess, an 80% like fit. Like, or like, what, like 50, 50 minutes into the run. Some of that. Big run killer because of how random the first phase can be. Oh. There we go. I'm just gonna be careful here. There we go. And got to We're good now. That, that, was a, that was a bit bit scary, but we're good. <laughs> <laughs> this boss right here is just simple. It goes into the ground, and because Spark hits below you as well, it can just kill him with that easily. Like, while he's on the ground and everything. Then we get fire back. Back to single fire. Back from, from whence we came. A root single fire. <laughs> and the nice thing about using Spark for that fight is that Spark's hitbox is continuous. In 100% because you need the needle ability later on in this level. Uh, like you, you, you fight the boss in almost the same way, except needle's hitbox doesn't last indefinitely in the same way that Spark does. Now, g give me a sire, please, in chat for this song right here. Best song <laughs> in the game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. Let's go. <laughs> It's all as it's also a bit interesting though. So every time, so I'm using a lot of single fire here underwater. It's a bit faster than just like so, something normally. I don't actually like go fast with single fire underwater. I have to like mash A at the very at, like at the very end of it. So I don't like go into a little falling animation, just like how it usually goes. But underwater it's a bit trickier because you can, I guess because like you can every like swim upwards. You can swim upwards like very slightly if you don't do that every time. That can lose a little more time if you're not careful. Uh, precision. That's the main key of this run, this precision. <laughs> Alright, done so correctly, two puffs. One and nope. Floor early. <laughs> That's fine.
It's a very short level, though. World Six in general is just very short. It's just how it is. However, this, next, this last level actually has the best music in the game. <laughs> At least in my opinion, it does. I concur. It's all type of tire, please, right now in chat. Just because of that. Very bassy, dancey, dancey music, you know? That's very nice. I mean, so there's gonna be a bomb enemy right here. We can buy him with that and the fireworks. And it's also my favorite, it's also my favorite power in the game, so it's perfect. It's it's very good for taking out all a lot of troops and enemies all in a row like this. That's what that's what it's all used for. So like a one, a two, and then back and forth like this after that. So I was reading on Game FAQs what I don't know, some person thought about every single like power combination in this game. And he ranked fireworks very low. What? And I'm just like, what? What? <laughs> Did they use it? <laughs> Their complaint was that after the third hit you lose control. <laughs> I mean like I, I tell you land, so if you try using this over a pit, like you'll die or something like that. Don't use over a pit then. <laughs> But in, in, for, for, the, for this level, it just like destroys just everything. Exactly. Like, look at this. It's just a massacre right now. It's pretty sad. Alright, one more room, and then get the final boss. I'm gonna start explaining Miracle Mare now. So, Miracle Mare is pretty much all the luck what happens. I have to hope that I get the fire and the bomb, or fire or the bomb phase first. If I'm lucky, I get both of them like back to back. That's only ever happened to me once time, one time before. My cat just came in my room, by the way. So if you hear some meows, that that's what happened. <laughs> but yeah, uh, hopefully I get that. If not, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I should get on the card there. I've not got a card all run. Oh well. There you go. Basically, each uh, each of the seven abilities in this game. Will correspond oh. to a certain phase of Miracle Matter. And the only way you can damage a specific phase is to use that same ability. So, if Miracle Matter randomly decided to start with Fire Bomb, uh, like Shasta could have just straight up uses fireworks that he already had and damage it quicker than uh, inhaling stuff. They had two really easy phases to start off with. And there's Bomb. Hello, friend. <laughs> Each of the phases, except for Bomb, takes three hits. Uh, bomb only takes two hits, but uh, almost. As a result, the, the how long it's vulnerable for is really, really short. Oh, I I I pushed myself really badly there. Just say that. That's only one. Yeah. Thought I get more from that. My health is really low right now. And that's a big concern. Hopefully, I don't have to worry too much. Alright, and be careful. Good. You can want to kill, like, every single face here. However, Bomb and Spark is actually are both luck in how they work. Unfortunately. I'm gonna not get this. Oh, I did get it. Yo, just barely. Sweet. So Spark's the worst phase. I hate Spark. <laughs> this That's also a bad pattern there. You don't want that to happen in this fire. Like that phase where he splits out in, three, in like four, all four directions is really bad. You don't want that. You want pattern where it goes horizontally or vertically. They can one to kill it. They can't one to kill that phase. I think this might be it. If I get this. Uh, no, no, I got bomb. Yeah, I just remembered. So yesterday I found a soft lock in this boss. By the way, <laughs> that's the thing that happened. I actually lost my last bit of health in that fire phase. I just, I just destroyed. Alright, good cat. <laughs> and I couldn't cut touch from Chris because of that. And time. For so so for some reason yesterday I couldn't touch that crystal after I after the fire phase. I I like died somehow, but the game didn't technically have been. That's what happened. It was really weird. <laughs> I still don't know how it happened. But yeah, GG's all around. My time was a 104.15. About two minutes off my PB.
with two deaths in there, that was wasn't too good. But before then, it was it was pretty good though, I'd say. I was ahead for a little bit. It's been fortunate because I practiced a lot for this run over the last week or so, but it's okay. What happens, happens. So there are two endings to this game. You get, this is the Ampers ending, of course. Hard to get a way different ending where everything is all resolved and everything. This ending you get this creepy lady. Oh, scary. <laughs> but yeah, that's Kirby 64. Thanks all for watching. I'm kind of I'm newish to this game, I guess. I've been running for like two or so months, off and on. Hoping to get better. Hopefully, get that sub eventually.